It's possible to have ethers in a ring system, and, and there are many different types of ring systems that you can have with ethers in them. The one that's studied most of the time would be the epoxides due to their reactivity. Here we have the simplest epoxide, and one name for this would be ethylene oxide, because this molecule is made from ethylene, and that's where you get your two carbons from, like that. So you could call this ethylene oxide, or you could give this an IUPAC name. And since there are two carbons in it, for the IUPAC name, we start with ethane as our parent name. And we know that the epoxide forms between carbons 1 and 2. So we can go ahead and write 1, 2, epoxy, ethane for the IUPAC name. Let's do another one here. So let's put some more, some more carbons on here. So we'll put a few extra carbons. And we'll name this using IUPAC nomenclature. So once again, uh, find your longest carbon chain. Right? So we can go ahead and find how many carbons are our longest carbon chain. That would be 1, 2, 3, and 4, like that. So we can go ahead and write butane for our parent name. So we can go ahead and put butane in here. I want to next number my carbon chain to give the lowest number possible to the substituents. So in this case, it makes more sense to number from the left. So I get 1, 2, 3, and 4 to give my substituents the lowest number possible. I can see now that my, my epoxide forms between carbons 2 and 3. So I'm going to write 2, 3, epoxy butane, like that. And I know that I also have a methyl group coming off of carbon 2. So to complete the name, all I have to do is write 2-methyl in the front here. So now I have 2-methyl, 2,3-epoxybutane for my IUPAC name. So how do we make epoxides? We've already seen one way to do it. And in an earlier video, we started with our alkene. And to the alkene, we added a peroxy acid. And a peroxy acid looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, except it has an extra oxygen in there like that. And in the mechanism for the epoxidation of alkenes, we saw it was a concerted mechanism where one of those oxygens was added in here to form our epoxide, like that. So check out the earlier video to see the mechanism for epoxidation um, of alkenes. So in this video, we're going to cover another way uh, to make epoxides, and uh, that is using halohydrins. So to make a halohydrin, you also start out with an alkene. And we also saw this mechanism in an earlier video. You add a halogen and water, and we're going to add bromine and water. And we end up adding the OH and, and one bromine across our double bond. So we ended up getting an anti-addition of an OH and a bromine. Okay, so they're going to add on opposite sides from each other like that. Okay, so this, this molecule is called a halohydrin. And again, check out an earlier video for the mechanism to form a halohydrin. Once you form a halohydrin, you can use that halohydrin to form an epoxide. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and take that halohydrin and let's see the mechanism of how we can form an epoxide from that. So I'm going to redraw that halohydrin. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the OH here like that, put my lone pairs of electrons. And then I have my, my bromine over here. And I'll go ahead and put in my lone pairs of electrons on bromine as well. And for right now, we could say anything could be attached to this. And we'll go into. Uh, We'll go into stereochemistry in the next video. So what we need to do is add a base. So something like sodium hydroxide will work. So we're going to add in sodium hydroxide, Na plus, OH minus. All right, so the hydroxide anion is going to function as a base. All right, so a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen are going to take this proton on our alcohol. And uh, these electrons in here are going to kick off onto our oxygen. So let's go ahead and draw the result of that acid-base reaction. All right, so what, did we ha what do we make from that? Well, now we have our oxygen with three lone pairs of electrons around it, like that, which give this oxygen, uh, it gives the oxygen a negative one formal charge. And we still have our bromine here, like that. And then we still have these other groups uh, attached to our carbon. So in the next step, 
The next step, we need to think about, again, the polarization in the, in the bonds between carbon and our halogen, right? Our halogen is more electronegative, so the halogen is going to take a little bit of this electron density in the bond between carbon and bromine, and therefore give the bromine a partial negative charge, right? This carbon is going to lose a little bit of electron density, so this carbon is actually partially positive. And so the alk oxide that we formed when the alcohol was deprotonated has a negative charge, it's going to function as a nucleophile. The partially positive carbon wants electrons. It's going to function as an electrophile. And we're going to get um, a, a, uh, a nucleophilic attack by our alk oxide anion on our partially positive carbon. So we're, this is actually an intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis. So if you think about it, right, if these electrons in here are going to attack this carbon, right? That would kick these electrons off onto your bromine like that. And it's an intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis where your alk oxide is the nucleophile in an SN2 type mechanism. So if we go ahead and draw the product, right now, this oxygen was bonded to the carbon on the right. Now it's also bonded to the carbon on the left. And the bromine left, that was our leaving group. And so we can see that we're going to end up forming an epoxide with this mechanism. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and do a quick problem here where uh, we're forming an epoxide from an alkene. And we'll, uh, we'll start with cyclohexene. So here is our cyclohexene molecule and we'll make an epoxide two ways right so in the first way we'll add uh, a peroxy acid and th there are several that you can um, use one of the most common ones would be peroxy acetic acid so peroxy acetic acid right looks very similar to acetic acid except you have an extra oxygen in there like that so it's epoxidation of an alkene and when we draw our product, right, so let's go ahead and draw our product, we form an epoxide. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the product with a, with a wedge here. Right? So there's an oxygen coming out relative to that plane. And if we go ahead and name our product, right, so the parent name would be cyclohexane. And uh, our epoxide would form between carbons 1 and 2. So we could go ahead and name this as 1,2-epoxy cyclohexane like that let's go ahead and and uh let's go ahead and to cyclohexene let's do a, another reaction let's, let's start with cyclohexene and this time in the first step we'll add some bromine and some water and that will form our halohydrin and in the second step we'll add sodium hydroxide to act as our base, and we get an intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis, and so we're going to end up with the same product. So we're going to end up with the same product here. We're going to end up with 1,2-epoxy cyclohexane. Now, for this reaction, we don't have to worry about stereochemistry, okay? So if you think about the oxygen adding from the other side of the ring, um, we don't have, we're, we're, we're not, we don't have to worry about stereochemistry for our products because if the, if the oxygen added from the other side of the ring, they would actually be the exact same molecule, 1,2-epoxy cyclohexane. So we'll save stereochemistry for the next video where we can focus in on what happens when you're adding an oxygen to different sides of a plane.